Hey guys, how's it going? So for those of you that know me and my channel, this is gonna be a departure from my normal guns, gear, that kind of stuff, and I'm gonna be talking about a phone. Uh, I'm gonna make a quick video on the Pixel 2 XL, and I'm also gonna make a quick video on the uh, Essential phone as well, because I have both of those, and I've been testing them for a little while. Uh, I'm not a tech reviewer, so this isn't a normal thing, but I like reviewing stuff, I like tech, and this review is gonna be the same as all of my reviews where I'm just gonna be talking about the stuff you care about. So when I'm talking about a gun or a knife or whatever, you already know the specs or a flashlight, you know the lumens, you know the batteries. So I don't really, I, I try not to dig that deep into that stuff like all these other reviews, which is just basically reading specs off the box. I gear my reviews more towards real life use. The questions that I would wanna see answered in a video uh, when I'm watching a review video myself because so many review videos out there suck. The quality's nice, you know, the content's nice and the audio's nice, but they're not talking about anything I actually care about. So when I do tech reviews, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of gear them in the same way that I do my other reviews, which is just practical real world stuff. If you wanna know the freaking milliamps in the battery, you already know probably if you're watching this video. All right, so the Pixel 2 XL, I've been a long, I've been a, user of the Pixel 1 basically since it came out. Uh, I'm factory resetting this phone because I'm sending it back in for credit because I'm not a hoarder. I don't hang on to old devices. So I've been a Pixel fan. I've been an Android fanboy for a long time. Uh, I also have the Essential phone, which I'll review after this. So I'm not gonna really compare them. I'm just gonna review the Pixel. So I'm not just a 100% Android fanboy. I actually ordered the iPhone 10 because I'm really curious about it too. So I'm gonna give iPhone a chance too, but for now, I'm Pixel. I love Pixel. I think the Google Eagle ecosystem is much better. I use Project Fi as my wireless provider. So if you're interested in Project Fi, I'll put a link down below and you can check it out. Basically, if you're on Wi-Fi a lot and you don't use much data, Project Fi is gonna be the way to go. Uh, but I won't get into that. So the Pixel 2 XL here, I got the six inch screen. There's some cool wallpapers. Yeah, they showed the little nerdy ones with the, the waves crashing on the beach or whatever. But this one is, well, this one's even more nerdy because it's the earth and it's actually updated with real cloud data. It actually centers on where you live. So America for me, and it actually shows where the sun is on the earth, like real time. So middle of the night, the sun will be on the other side, middle of the day, the sun, it'll be all illuminated. Anyways, it's cool little wallpaper. If you're curious about the wallpapers, there's some pretty cool ones. Uh, little info on the top does show your upcoming meetings. You guys know about that. Google search bar at the bottom. So what are you curious about probably? You're probably curious about uh, the screen. That's the main thing people are wondering about these days. So is there a color shift? Yeah, you can see it. You've, you've watched all the videos on it. Is it bad? Are you gonna notice it? No, you're, I, don't, I don't think you're gonna notice it. The screen's not bad. The screen's not bad at all. I would say the screen is good. If you have it right next to the phone with the best screen, which was maybe the Note 8 right now, uh, Samsung AMOLED makes great screens. This is made by LG. They're kind of a little newer to the game for cell phone displays for using OLED technology. So Samsung displays are the best. So one of the biggest complaints for this phone is that it's not as vibrant, it's not as vivid as the other phones. That's the software setting. So Google already announced that they're gonna update their uh, software to either provide a more vibrant option or just make the phone more vibrant. In general, there is a 10% boost vibrant thing uh, that helps a little bit, but it doesn't do much, to be totally honest. Screen burn-in, I don't have it on my phone, uh, but if, if you know anything about it, it's kind of a problem with most OLED devices at some point or another. It's a little concerning that it's happening so fast, but it's one of those things that you don't see unless you turn the screen dimness down to 10% and really like try to see it. A normal person's never gonna see it. I tried to see it, I didn't see it, so it's kind of, it, it only affects certain models. As always, the on display, you can make it super dim at night, uh, shows your notifications, does have a little LED light as well that flashes, though the flash frequency I think is too long between flashes, but maybe it saves battery life, whatever. Uh, this doesn't use much battery life. It has the always listening function that you can turn on or off. I don't care about that at all, uh, but I'm also kind of a homebody, so I'm not at bars and stuff, and I don't really care about music that I don't know what it is. Uh, so some people will like that feature, but the always on display is awesome because at a glance, you don't have to turn on your screen to see if you have any new notifications or anything. They'll be right there and then you can interact with them uh, as you see fit. So I want the Pixel 2 XL because I wanted smaller bezels. I like small bezels. So let's, let's get into something here that you'll be able to see the actual bezel size here. So here I took a picture of some frost out here and you're gonna be able to see the bezels are pretty, oh, 
The bezels are pretty nice, actually. Come on. They're not super big, but compared to the iPhone 10, compared to the Note 8, the S8, the LG V30 even, the Essentials phone especially, the bezels are bigger than I wish, but you do get front-facing speakers, which sound great, and you already probably know about that. So it does have front-facing speakers, which are great. Uh, the reason I've been getting Pixel devices lately is because, well, lately, this is only the second Pixel device that they have ever even made, is because the camera is top notch. Uh, now I'm not gonna really get into a camera review because that's not what I'm about, but the detail, the dynamic range, everything is really, really amazing. Uh, this year the cameras are even better for me because I film stuff uh, for YouTube on my cell phone oftentimes. So the cameras now, the rear camera has optical and digital video stabilization. So that'll be huge for when I'm making little run and gun videos on my cell phone. So that's a big reason I got it. Uh, as you know, again, the camera is a single camera on the back, though it does have like split pixels or something, which is what allows it to do the portrait modes, which is, you know, what, what Apple does. This doesn't do anything with like the fancy lighting or anything, but it does blur the background. I found that with the rear shooter, portrait mode is really, really great. Looks pretty natural. Uh, for the front shooter, the front facing camera does not have that dual split pixel technology, um, but it does Skynet does process your photos and give you the blurred background portrait effect. I found that it looks more unnatural, uh, just the blur effect for whatever reason. I feel like it looks more unnatural with the selfie uh, photo. I don't know if it's just how wide angle the lens is or whatnot, but I feel like the, the selfie pictures though they are great, great front facing camera on this. They just look a little more unnatural for whatever reason. Uh, I've, I've seen some other people talk about that too. Uh, so what else, what else are you curious about? So squeeze feature is awesome. Squeeze it launches your Google assistant. I use it quite a bit. Everyone, everyone you see that's going to review this or phone, the phone is going to say, ah, it sounded kind of gimmicky at first, but you use it. I use Google Assistant a lot already. I have a Google Home device. I use this for my shopping list, set reminders, set timers, everything. I really love it. Uh, so I'm using it a lot. Uh, Google Assistant has proven that it's just kind of a step ahead or two or three or four steps ahead. Most of the other assistants out there, Siri's kind of falling behind, unfortunately, but I am going to give iPhone 10 a shot, like I said earlier. But Google Assistant, amazing. It can do a lot of stuff, and that's, that's one of the big reasons I like Google phones as well. You got your other standard fare. So the, a good thing is the fingerprint reader is super, super fast. Uh, it's kind of stupid to show because I can't show you the moment that I touch my finger on the back to show you how fast it is, but it's instant. Fingerprint unlock is just put it on, it's done, it's good to go. Other stuff, you can launch the camera with a double click here. That's instant, instantaneous, beautiful. I did go into developer options and adjust, tweak some of the settings like so I have seconds on my clock. I like that a lot because I use my kind of timer functionality a lot. So I like having the second countdown up here. Uh, there's videos out there that show you how to do that. I'm not going to get that deep. This little top bar is nice. It shows you, for me, it just shows, you know, weather and time and stuff. But if you do have a calendar coming, calendar event coming up, it does show that. I don't know if it's 20 or 30 minutes out, but it does show it up top, which is nice if you use Google Calendar. Search at the bottom, obviously. A uh, great thing about this is I typically set up my phones in a way that my thumb can reach everything. So down here I have, you know, the apps that I kind of use most often in folders over here I have my calendar, I have a big daily Bible verse and some other apps that I use uh, somewhat frequently. Qdoba app obviously is super important. Uh, so I have my phone set up pretty minimal, but it's what I like. The, the stuff I use most is down in this corner and everything else is clean. I don't like cluttering up my phone. This is why I don't, this is one of the reasons that I think I'll really dislike an iPhone in the fact that there's no widgets and there's no anything. Another huge awesome thing about the uh, Pixel and the Essential phone now just got an update is you can swipe down with the fingerprint uh, reader to get to your notifications. You can double swipe to get all the way down. So I also set up these icons where the ones I use the most are in the top right here and then it drops down and kind of reorders but basically I have everything set up for, for a very usable usable experience. Uh, phone in hand feels great. I've heard some reviewers say that it feels top heavy. 
I don't really think it does. The back is aluminum with some glass on top. It is not glossy, it does not collect fingerprints very easily, and is super grippy. It's one of the grippiest phones out of the box that you're gonna get if you're not gonna put a case on it or skin or whatever. Uh, it's really has good traction, I guess, for, for your hand. Uh, buttons are placed well. You have your volume up, down, lower, and your power button up here, so that's nice as well. I like that fingerprint reader is fast. It just gets right in. You don't have to swipe up or anything. With Face ID for, uh, for the iPhone X, uh, I hate that it doesn't have a fingerprint. I hate that you're gonna have to look at it. And furthermore, maybe someone can answer this in the comments. I hate that you have to look at it and then you have to swipe up. So you unlock your phone with your face and then you have to also swipe up. Like, ain't nobody got time for that. This isn't an iPhone X review. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. I love Android because I always have dedicated buttons down here. I always have a back button. I always have a home button. I always have a uh, recent app or task manager or whatever you want to call it button over here. No matter what, no matter what app I'm in, I have that. I have access to that. It's awesome. Uh, task switcher, if you're on your home screen or whatever, you tap it up obviously and you get to your recent apps here. But what people don't know also, if you want to be really fast, you just tap it twice and you get right into your most recent app twice again and you get into whatever the recent app is. Uh, now you'll get into the most recent app again, which kind of just cycles back because now whatever your previous recent app is now your second most recent app and you do it and now it becomes your most recent app and your previous most recent app becomes your second most recent app. Anyway, so you kind of get into a cycle if you do that of only really being able to access your two most recent apps, but it is what it is. Uh, that might have been confusing for you, but if you do want to get to any of your other recent apps, you go down here. If you want to clear them all out for whatever reason, you can clear them all out at the top. One big thing that I've seen like every, it sucks because all these tech, tech review guys, they don't even know, but say you're watching a video here. Say you're watching a video here and it goes to full screen. Everyone is complaining about these bars over here. Sorry, let me turn the volume down a little bit. They're like, oh, the Note 8 has a little button you can press and go full screen. The, this does, the, you just pinch it and it goes full full width. So you loot, it cuts off the top and the bottom, but then you don't have black bars and you utilize the whole screen. I like watching YouTube videos like this. Uh, unfortunately, some videos I watch kind of cut off something in the top and bottom. Sometimes it's important, 99% of the time it's not. So I prefer watching like this. So just pinch it. If you have a Pixel 2 XL and you're like, oh man, I wish it did that thing. It does, man, just do this and it, and it works like that. So that's something that is really cool and helps utilize you know, your s smaller bezels and bigger screen. Looks really nice. Um, so yeah, that's, that's another feature that people are missing the mark on, all these other tech reviewers. The other nice thing I love about the YouTube app is say you wanna go home or whatever, this stays here stays here. I want to go home and say I want to get into Instagram. I can keep on watching my YouTube thing no matter what. Uh, and then if I want to go back into it, so I'm controlling this with my screen, I can go into it like that. So it's just, it's pretty, pretty sweet little picture in picture thing. Uh, I love it. It's like one of my favorite features. I, I, I probably couldn't live without this because I watch YouTube videos and do other stuff so much. So another cool thing you can do is if you want to go into split screen mode, you can long press the switcher and you can now have two split screens that you can interact with them separately. Uh, you want to get out of that, you just long press the app switcher again and you're good to go. So that's pretty much it. Uh, in summary, cool live wallpapers. The screen is certainly not as bad as the press is making it out to be. Fingerprint sensor in the right place for me, in my opinion, works fast, works beautiful. Can access, swipe down to get to your notification bar from the back, which I love. I don't like having to reach up uh, for the notification bar. I would rather just, my hand is already like this, swipe down, get to it, awesome, beautiful. Squeeze feature is awesome. You can dial it in. A lot of people are saying you're gonna trigger that by accident all the time. You're gonna trigger it every time you take it out of your pocket. No, you just have to dial in the sensitivity. I would dial it kind of on the higher end, so you have to give it a pretty good squeeze so it's really intentional. It is the fastest way to access Google Assistant, and I would recommend using Google Assistant. Google Assistant can do some, some amazing things. So what do you really, really care about? Is the Pixel 2 XL for you? maybe, or the Pixel 2 regular, which I don't really like the big bezels, but if you like a smaller phone, that'll work for you. Uh, is the Pixel for you? Uh, 
Let's see. The screen, is it really as bad as people say it is? Not even remotely. People are just looking for something you know, to, to harp on. The camera, is it as good as people are saying it is? Yes, absolutely. But best camera out. I'm getting the, 10, the iPhone 10 soon, so we'll compare it and we'll see uh, if it really is the best camera. Who, or who, who knows, who knows? But it is a really, really, really great camera. Fingerprint sensor, amazing, super fast. Also swipe down for notifications. I use it all the time, it's a great feature. The squeeze feature, I love it. Uh, I use Google Assistant a lot. Uh, and if you don't use your assistant, whatever, Siri, Google Assistant, Bixby, whatever, I would recommend starting to use it. It really makes your life easy. I use it a lot for reminders. I have so many things going on. I'll remind myself, remind myself in two hours, remind myself at 2 p.m., remind myself when I get home. You can do all these kinds of things. Um, and it also makes your life a lot easier. You can tell it to read your latest text. You can tell it to, tell it to send a text. None of this should be new to you, but you can do a lot of stuff. You can tell it to take a selfie if you don't feel like messing with your screen. If you put your phone on a tripod and you want to take a picture of yourself, you can say, hey, Google, take a picture. And it will. I'm trying not to... I'm not to trigger all my Google devices, but you can tell it to take a picture and it will. You can tell it to do all kinds of stuff. You can say, take me home, and it launches the Maps app and starts navigation. So that way you're not fidgeting with your phone. It's really, you have this technology at your disposal. Start embracing it. Start using all the features of it. Uh, what else? Always on display is nice, though this is nothing new. LGs have it. Uh, Samsung have had it for years, but finally coming to the Pixel. Front-facing speakers are awesome, especially if you can consume a lot of media on your device. They're not so loud and so high quality, they're gonna blow every other phone out of the water, but they are amongst the best speakers and they're stereo and they're faced at you. So as far as speakers are concerned, for any of the flagship devices out there now, I would say the Pixel takes the cake, especially if you're watching YouTube. YouTube, you can pinch to go full screen. If you're wondering, yes, that is a thing. And a Pixel device, the main reason people get Pixel devices is because they're they're optimized for Android. Uh, they're optimized, so they're basically the iPhones of Android. They're gonna be the fastest, they're gonna be, get the fastest updates. They're always gonna be the first phone to get updates. They're always gonna be most likely, so I shouldn't say always, most likely always gonna be the smoothest, snappiest. They have high-end processor and RAM and everything in there, uh, but also the optimization and the fact that they're always gonna get updates and bug fixes and everything the fastest. Uh, that's one of the main reasons I like Pixel devices. Uh, in addition to their just like outstanding cameras that they always have. And what else? Feel in hand is good. The rounded edges are perfect. The size wall big. This is a big phone. It's not gonna be as big as your iPhone 8 Plus, although the screen is gonna be a half inch bigger. Uh, it's, it's a big phone. It feels like a big phone. It handles like a big phone, but it's, it's comfortable. It's very comfortable. It's not too heavy. It's just heavy enough to feel like a premium device. Your traction is gonna be plenty adequate with this like little texture that they put on the aluminum. Uh, and wireless charging. My, I, I had a phone, whatever, four years ago that had wireless charging. I've had a couple phones that had wireless charging and I personally just never really used it. I didn't really embrace the tech. My Toyota Tacoma has a little wireless charger built into the console and I never used it. So it's just kind of like wireless charging, it's cool. And yeah, Apple finally got it, but I, it's not a big deal for me personally. Whether it is for you or not, that's, that's for you to decide. So anyway, that's it that I could think of off the top of my head rambling through this video. But if you have any questions about the Pixel or phones in general, feel free to ask them below. And while my specialty on YouTube is really guns and knives and gear and that kind of stuff, I'm pretty competent at tech. So if you're curious, feel free to ask below and I will do my best to get you an answer. Okay, I'm gonna film an Essential phone review real quick and probably just upload them both at once. So if you're into the Essential, stay tuned. And if you're into guns and gear and knives and all that kind of stuff, I'll get back to my normal scheduled programming very shortly. All right, take care.